All right, so welcome to Intuition to Income. This is Abby Gooch, and I am so excited you guys are here today. This is just really my mission and passion on the planet to bring this intuitive wisdom to all of you. And the beautiful thing is we already have intuition. So these are just conversations about how you can connect more with your intuition to heal and create a life you love and create an amazing business, grow your income, and serve our planet in just the way that you are meant to, which is sharing your gifts. So we have an amazing guest, um, this man, E.G. Sebastian, he's, he's a kick to me. He, we always laugh every time we talk. And he's one of those people that's super intuitive, and I don't even know if he realizes how intuitive he is. And he's been able to build some amazing companies. Um, he just let me know he bought a house. He's always following his intuition to the best of his ability, like we all are, I'm sure. And he's really been able to grow and impact a lot of people. So, E.G., I would love for you to introduce yourself to our audience, and welcome, welcome. Well, thank you for inviting me. This is really exciting, and uh, yeah, intuition. Intuition is like air, I guess. We don't know it's there, but it's there, and that's how I met you. I saw you that you were an intuitive coach, and you had all this intuition stuff online, and I'm like, what the heck is that? Is it even real? <laughs> Yes, so, it's the most practical thing you can use. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, well, a little bit about me. Um, I uh, used to be a surgical assistant many years ago, uh, and that was in Hungary, in Europe. And I was making about 100 bucks a month. And I, I used to be very smart. I think I'm still a little bit smart, but I did math and I ended up, I said, if I save all my money and if I don't spend any, anything on food and rent and nothing, in about 10 years, I can finally buy a car. <laughs> wow. And in another 20 years, I can buy a house. Yeah. And I'm like, you know what? That doesn't make sense. Yeah. So I quit my job and I decided I would become a millionaire or homeless. And in a short eight month, I reached my goal. Wow. I became homeless. <laughs> and then you must True develop story. from there. <laughs> True story. <laughs> okay, so how did you grow your income from there, from base level? <laughs> <laughs> yes. So I was 24. I was homeless. I lived at the, at the church shelter. I dressed up every day in a suit and a tie, and I was going out there, and uh, I got myself a sales job. Um, and um, I had a couple of mentors and uh, I just started doing things. I don't want to get too deep into it, but I was 24. By 25, I had, I started a, a company, an export import company, made lots of mistakes. By 25, I had $300,000 in debts. <laughs> so the story starts really well, great. And by 26, around 26 i was even like a zero yay it was a happy day and by 27 i was making multiple six figure income 27 years old young man with the long curly hair never shaved looked like jesus christ <laughs> and i was going to these events with all these fancy guys and they were asking me like which college did you go to and back then i would just say i've never been to a college didn't don't even know where college is yeah. but i was very proud of my achievements and uh, and I traveled around the world. And uh, finally, I moved to the United States at 27. Mm -hmm. I went to college here. Uh, so I have a degree also. Uh, and then I discovered coaching here, life coaching. Mm -hmm. And throughout my life, I always mentored others. But I didn't know you could get paid for it. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you can get paid for that? Like, what? Yeah. So right away, I enrolled in one of the best schools. I did my research, one year intensive IPEC coaching, all you IPEC coaches, hi. Um, and uh, it changed my life, it changed the course of my life. Uh, I learned about uh, getting clients, the best way is through public speaking. So I learned public speaking, even though I had a phobia of public speaking. Mm. Uh, and I didn't know you can make money with public speaking. So even though I tried to put on free workshops, people would ask me, can you put that on for our employees? Give us an estimate, give us a, a proposal and how much do you charge? So I became a paid speaker also. So for the past 17 years, I spoke at hundreds of corporate events, conferences, retreats, um, all, all kind of training events, 
keynotes at international events. It was an amazing journey and still is. Uh, I travel less, so now I coach mostly, because people throughout the years, they kept asking me, EG, how do you get all these clients? How do you get the speaking gigs? And so I kept, for years, I just would share it free in my LinkedIn group, where I have, uh, what, 76,000 members by now. But that's where I was sharing everything that I learned and everything I knew. And some people kept telling me, EG, why don't you charge for this? Mm -hmm. I get paid to, for, for life coaching, for ex executive coaching. And uh, I get paid to speak. So this is just, I'm just helping new coaches. But after a while, I had two little kids and I was always on the road. And uh, I was missing out on being there for them. So one day I said, you know what? Maybe it's time to shift. And instead of speaking and traveling, uh, maybe I should stay home and be with my kids. Mm. So that's when in 2009, I transitioned almost full time to business and marketing coaching. Mm. And uh, I published a book, Communication Skills Magic, back in 2009, I believe, also. Or oh, no, earlier. And, uh, and that opened lots of doors in corporate uh, venues. And um, that's about it. Hmm. So how were you able to follow your intuition through that? Like, what was the process of you connecting with your intuition that guided you to do all those things? My process is really simple. And I hope I will inspire some people with this very <laughs> scientific process. The thought enters my mind and I just do it. Mm. I don't overthink it. I'm like, I'm like, wow. Like with the, with the job. Like one day I realized that, hey, if I work for so many years, I can buy a car, and like, but I cannot eat meanwhile and all that. And who the heck wants to wait for 10 years to buy a car? I'm like, <laughs> and there's no, there was no credit in back mm. then in, in mm -hmm. Hungary. Mm. And, um, so the thought enters my mind that, uh, that, hey, you need to quit. You need to start a business. You need to do something that, uh, and then from then on, probably it was all intuition driven. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I just went and just followed every day, just, I don't know. I just what feels did. right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that you're, yeah. yeah, that usually is the way that intuition works. It's like the first thought that comes through you that feels right usually is right. It's that, you know, you could call it higher self, that soul and body, that higher part of you that knows that it's actually kind of downloading stuff from the universe through you. Right. And, and sometimes, yeah. And sometimes we, we try to muscle it with logic or something and that did not work. So that's why I became homeless because my my reasoning the my original reasoning didn't work so i couldn't just become a salesman it was very unnatural for me so every day i meditated i meditated and, and and i was thinking about one question what do i want to do for the rest of my life what am i good at what would i enjoy what would I make me jump out of bed in the morning and, and love to do it yeah. and it took me many months of meditation to finally and, and, and this is another lesson for lots of people. We have gifts that we take for granted and we don't capitalize on them because we think it's normal. I mean, I can, you know, do whatever, you know, but that's just whatever. So I realized that, oh my God, I speak four languages mm -hmm. and I love languages. Ever since I was four years old, I mean, I told my parents I want to go to English school. Yeah. There was no English school, so I went to German school. <laughs> But so I became an interpreter before I was making 47 cents an hour wow. as an interpreter. I was making a dollar an hour. Yay. <laughs> Living the life in about three months, I raised it to $5 an hour. Wow. And then one day I met this young lady and she says, how much do you charge? I'm like $5 an hour. She says, no, I cannot tell my boss that you charge that he will not hire you. Can I save 10? I'm like, yes, please. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you gotta have the actual value that matches. Yeah, for sure. I worked every day, about 16 hours a day, every day. So I raised my price to $100 per engagement. That engagement could have been 30 minutes or two hours. It was $100 mm. because 
I mean, I, I got, you know, kept out with my time and I just yeah. would say a price, like you said, you know, whatever comes out. Cause one day I just said it a hundred dollars and they're like, okay. And from then on, it was a hundred dollars. And yeah. uh, I was still busy, still work 16 hours a day. And then I thought, why do they have so much money? Let me do what they do. So I started a company mm. and I built all this relationship through me interpreting to these people that I was able to just borrow tens of thousands of dollars. There was no paperwork. There was no nothing, no interest. They just says, yeah, okay, here, mm. just, you know, so it was amazing, but that's how I built a $300 in debt <laughs> because wow. people just gave me money yeah. and it was easy to get the money and I was not able to generate income in the beginning. Wow. But then I kept on watching what they do and many of them mentored me and uh, for free back then. And uh, yeah, I mean, it, it changed my life. Like sometimes I think back and I'm thinking, oh my God, if I didn't quit my job or if I didn't take this specific decision, I would have not met these people. I would have not you know, achieved all this. And then here in the United States also, uh, had I not, well, it was, do you know um, Leonard Thomas? No. Mm -mm. Well, he, he, back in the day, he was known as the founder of the coaching profession. Okay. Which many other people say that they are the founders, but mm. I was reading the news and in the news it says that Leonard Thomas passed away the founder of modern life coaching and i went to his website coachville was his website mm -hmm. free coaching resources and all that and i ended up crying sobbing for this guy who i've never met wow. but the descriptions of what he did in life and his goals were so ins inspiring to me and i said you know what thomas i will continue your legacy yeah wherever you stopped i will continue so you see if if i didn't read the news that day I don't know when I will find out about coaching, but that's how I found out about coaching. And that's how I decided to be <laughs> yeah. the next Leonard Thomas. <laughs> you never know where it's like the universe is leading you, kind of like little signs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's really cool. That's so, my short answer to your long question. Nice, great answer. So how would you inspire our audience to trust their intuition, right? So you talk about like, you know, you, you have the first thought, you take action on it. Um, but if you overanalyze it, I know sometimes that can be a problem. So how would you, you know, advise people to just really trust what their intuition is telling them and know that it's their intuition, not their head? So this, this is tough. This is really tough uh, or simple for some people. <laughs> it depends who you are. Yeah. Because how do you differentiate between a intuition or a or a thought that was instilled into you by your environment. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you explained it beautifully and I loved it. You, you, you said that the way it feels like, just center and see where, it, where you feel it in your body. And I really love that uh, explanation. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I, I, I do not suggest people do it the way I do it mm -hmm. because uh, like in one of my speeches, I, I give this example that I pulled out this. I used to love to break stuff. I mean, I, I still do, but I'm holding back because I'm afraid I get hurt. The mm. older I get, the more cautious I become. But I used to just love to break anything. And our river froze and I pulled out this giant block of ice and I leaned it against the tree and I tried to break it and it didn't break. Mm. And I tried again and I centered, I visualized that my hand goes through it and I tried again and it didn't break. Ice doesn't break. Yeah. <laughs> and my hand had broken little bones like up till my here, my, my hand became really big and I could feel the pieces of bone in there, but that's me. I try something and I try and I try. I either go through it or I break. Yeah. So I don't suggest that you do the same. I, I think that, yes, write, write it down. I always like to write down things because otherwise it disappears. And, and if it feels right and it gives you that butterflies, like, oh, I could do this for the rest of my life. Or, you know, this feels really good. I want to do it. I don't say jump into it. I say research it also a little bit because I, as a marketing coach, I have lots of clients who come to me and they say, I have this great idea and I'm so excited about it. I want to become a full-time coach and I want to coach 
uh, I want to change the world, make the world a better place. I want to coach homeless people. And I'm like, oh, that's so wonderful. I want to give you a hug. And I'm like, how will you get paid? Like, are you in the independently wealthy or how? Oh, I didn't think about that. So, you know, like I have many clients who come to me with this kind of ideas and now I'm a little smarter. Like in the beginning, I would uh, gently tell them that how about we choose a niche where you can make money and then on the side, you can also do this as an altruistic uh, venture. Mm -hmm. But now I say, you know what? You can go to banks and corporations and stuff and you can raise money and, and, uh, you can start a nonprofit and you get paid and you can, yeah, you can coach the homeless if that's your goal. So I, I do come up with uh, creative solutions, but still sometimes, uh, you know, you have to be careful that the thought that enters to your mind, it's not necessarily, you know, like, let me move to uh, the North Pole and sell ice to the Eskimos, you know, that's so exciting and I can sled every day and ski. Well, it's, so, you know, I, I don't think, I say, yeah, listen to it, write it down, but do some research that is it a realistic thing to do. But with relationships and with lots of other things, the, the, if your intuition tells you that this is not right, I think, yeah, listen to it because it never led me astray. I mean, mm-hmm. I've been married now for 23 years. When I met this young girl, I just knew it. I'm like, and I told my brother, I said, you know, if I could marry this girl, if she agreed to marry me one day, I'd be the luckiest man on the planet. Mm. And silly girl, she went for it. <laughs> so now we married for 23 or 24 years. I stopped counting at 20. So now I'm just guessing. Enough. That's beautiful. I love that. I love your analogy of like putting your hand into the ice. What I wanted to share that came through for me about that is, you know, if you're forcing something, it's like you're punching something or trying to, yeah, force or break through something. That's not intuition. So if you feel that, like pull away and see if you can flow. So if you feel yourself forcing, your intuition will actually kind of like take, it's like a ship. It'll like take you in another direction. So if you feel a force, move into flow. And then feel like you shared, you know, a great way to know it's your intuition. You get like the butterflies. It feels really good. There's an uplifting feeling. So, okay, so this direction of forcing isn't working. But if I allow myself to soften and move into flow, then my intuition is going to give me a positive feeling to move in another direction. So keep listening to that gut feeling. And you talked about the inner knowing that I, we talked about a little bit before this, um, this interview and the way that I described it to EG and all of you are welcome to follow along is to bring your awareness from your head into your heart. So we can all do that now and we'll feel this interconnectedness through love, through our heart that we all have to each other, to everything and everyone, right? The pulsation of life is in our heart. We're constantly interacting. And then from that place, you can drop down. I call it like the tunnel of love through your heart into your core, a couple of inches below your belly button. And that's the center of knowing that you is talking about. It's the knowing of truth. You can feel what's right or wrong, true or untrue, um, your yes or no, and feel that inner knowing. Since you told me that, I keep practicing that. Like every week I find myself a couple of times, like, where do I feel this? Yeah. Do I feel it like up high or yeah. down, you know? Like. Yeah. So you can always, like I said, ask a question and say, okay, you know, the question is this, um, and then you'll get the answer. So you'll get that yes or no feeling. So you guys can all practice that now if you want. You know, ask a question, hear it in your mind, and just bring your awareness down through your heart into your gut. Feel that center of knowing. So remind us, like, where is the feeling if, if it's really the intuition? Where would you feel it? You're going to feel it in your gut. But make sure you go through your head and your heart because then it's going to be based in love. So if you move your awareness through your heart, you've quieted the mind, you've created a foundation of love, and then you've dropped into your knowing. Whereas if you don't, you can kind of ping pong back and forth in your head. Um, You can get fear. You can get wrapped up in a bunch of energy. You can get distracted um, instead of that center place of knowing. You know, if you think about, I don't know, a jar and going to the very center of that jar, there's a center point to that. 
in that center as you're knowing. So it's fun to use it to navigate, you know, like we talked about the ship, letting that navigate, you know, using that as an analogy that your intuition can help you navigate, you know, finding the flow. Where does your yeses open and where does the energy open and go there? Yeah. 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 Do you have any other questions? Yeah, I love it. I love, um, I love these conversations. Actually, I, I've been mentioning you ever since we talked, I don't know, two, three weeks ago. But when I talk to clients, and now I, I ask them, like, where do you feel this? Is it yeah. low down in your gut? Or is it a tension up high? Or where do you feel this? Yeah. You know, so I, I mention you now regularly. You became part of my life. Oh, good. I'm so glad. <laughs> prior, to meeting, prior to meeting you, I've never talked about the intuition. Yeah. I thought it was a word in the dictionary. Uh, whatever. Yeah. A legend, the right, dragon. right, and that's why it's so fun talking to CEOs about it because I feel like often they are doing it; they're just not aware of it, right? And it's like, oh, right, ding, right. yeah, that's what I've been doing, you know. So it's really beautiful, um, very cool. So as you have followed your intuition and you've watched your income grow, how have you noticed that that can serve other people? Because my belief is when we're following that knowing, we're creating money from that place of love, and then we're able to serve. So whether it's your family or, you know, outside of your business, obviously you're serving your clients in your business, but like, you know, for me to have a nonprofit, like what are the different ways that you've actually seen the increase of income because you followed your intuition, be able to serve the planet at large? Well, and that's a, that's a very important, I don't know if I want to say angle, but uh, something to consider. Mm -hmm. Because we, especially as coaches and lots of people out there, we have a big heart and we want to help, but without money, you cannot. Mm. And, and also some, some coaches, they will judge you if you charge higher or mm -hmm. the truth is I'm not a fan of high ticket coaches. And when I hear high ticket, the hair stands up on my back a little bit. Mm -hmm. But the, the truth is that without a high income, you cannot make an impact around you. So, you know, sh trade value for value. So you give value, you get money in return. You make an impact. And wh when, you, when you offer to solve somebody's problems or, or help them achieve their goals, they gladly reward you with money. And then you can make a difference in the world. I, for example, I um, grew up in a, in a house where my parents, very loving parents. I'm one of those few people on the planet mm. whose parents didn't divorce. Mm. But they were at each other every day, mm. yelling, screaming, uh, at times plates flying, at times a little pushing, window breaking, my mother bleeding, me trying to beat up my dad with a broom at four years old. Uh, and I got beat up every day. My dad... Uh, punches, kicks, grabbing me by the neck in my pants and throwing me and stepping on me. And then my mom verbally abusing me almost every day. The, it, was like a, it was like a sitcom because when my dad was beating me, my mom would come and try to stop him. That's really nice. And then when my mom was verbally abusing me, my dad would tell her, Stop it. You will <laughs> damage the kid with all that. Calling me retarded and an idiot. And how could I give birth to such a retarded kid? I mean, that's how, that's how I was raised. And um, I started reading books on uh, relationships and psychology at about age nine. I was reading a book about every week. I mean, wow. I was at the library. I spent my days at the library. That was my favorite place on, on the planet. So by the time I became a, a life coach, this was one of those things that I took for granted. I, I would have never considered relationship coaching. And um, so I published the book, Communication Skills Magic, and the dedication in the book says that uh, uh, my goal with the book is to help at least a million families uh, mm -hmm. eliminate conflict and eliminate child abuse. Because the abuse that happened mostly in my childhood was because of personality differences. My dad was a very analytical type person, and I was a very people person. Bubbly, outburst, very disorganized, ADD type, and my dad like very square and very organized and all that. And because of that discrepancy, 
the conflict was there without even knowing it. I mean, he sometimes wanted to just choke me because I was so different from him. And once I understood these differences, and even with my wife, after I married her, she was driving me nuts. I thought she had OCD. I wanted to run away. And then when I learned about the different personality styles, then I realized, oh, realized that, oh, so she's an analytical type. She's not weird. Mm -hmm. She's differently wired. Mm -hmm. And now I understood that she is actually not my enemy. It's not somebody who I should choke. It's somebody who I should embrace because she has strengths that I don't have. Mm -hmm. and together, we are like a puzzle. We yeah. fit together because I'm the person who brings in the fun and excitement and all that stuff in the relationship. And she's the one who brings the organization that everything runs as it should in the family. And so when I published my book, I made it available for free um, online as a PDF because I want to impact as many people in the world as possible. Also, I reached out to nonprofits and lots of nonprofits get my book at barely any any profit from it for me and um, so I'm trying to spread that message all over all over the world and it allows me because I can afford to do that if yeah. I didn't have the money I could not donate I donated books also to organizations and and um, so yeah but it it needs you need money in order to be able to give yeah, I mean, we can help people and each other, right, in so many different ways, right, with a smile, you know, like a kiss on the cheek or whatever it is that it's appropriate, right, like we all can help, but I think what you're saying, what I'm getting from what you're saying is you can make an even greater impact when you have the money, the resources, right, so, That's right. That's right. yeah, so I know like, yeah, like my company, for instance, right, like the overflow, and even then we go give to the nonprofit for the kids in the orphanage, so you, 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 you basically, I love that you said you exchange, right? So you, you find your own value, you find the value of the work you do, you exchange value through money as one source, right? There's obviously love is the greatest source, but you also have the money exchange, which builds the business that then allows you to serve greater, right? Like you're describing. So I love that. I also love that you shared your personal story. Thank you. I had no idea. And, I really share it, and I'm always afraid my parents will watch it. Yeah, and what it's I what love- it is. And and we are best friends by now. So, you know, I mean, they are amazing people, amazing grandparents, uh, but it is the truth and uh, that's uh, what it is. And it shaped me to be who I am today. So that's so amazing that you could move through that healing journey and actually be able to say they're some of your best friends. Like, I'm just in awe of that. Um, and the point I wanted to make is, you know, our intuition, the reason I teach it, one of the reasons is it connects us to the truth that we just felt. So when you have something like you had, I mean, I had abuse as a child as well, your intuition connects you to the truth of you no matter what has happened. So if somebody calls you stupid, retarded, is beating you, is raping you, is hurting you in any way, your intuition, the soul and body, that part of you that knows, knows that you are still worthy of love. It knows the truth, right? So I just, I think it's powerful because, you know, coaching is a lot about mindset and shifting the mindset to actually open up to the infinite potential that the intuition holds, that knowing of truth, that soul, the infinite expression. And so whatever any of you and us have all been through, um, we can always go to that source of knowing with and that can be the guiding force to heal us. And so you started reading books. I'm sure you, again, whether or not aware of it or not, were intuitively guided to read a book at eight or nine because you started learning about relationships and how it works. And you have a beautiful relationship. So it's going to lead you to the next thing for your next best life, right? Like your next best part of your life. Like this is your life. Here's how it can be amazing. Your intuition is going to guide you into that next step. So I just want to invite everybody to really trust their intuition, you know, whether you're working with me or one of these other coaches that we have on to develop that knowing that self trust, where you can actually listen to that soul embodiment, that guidance and say, Oh, yeah, I can do that. I am love, I can succeed. And those other patterns those unconscious things that were developed over time from experience can be dropped away, they can be reframed and shifted into the positive. So I love that. So beautiful. Thank you for being transparent. That's, that's key in anybody's life to listen to that little voice because once you listen and you go out, the next step will reveal. Don't. So, some people, that's what I noticed that some people they have the voice and 
the intu their intuition tells them to do something, but then they try to see the end result and they don't, they don't see clearly the steps so they don't take action. Mm. But this is like, it's not a straight road and you don't have binoculars, it's a winding road. You cannot see what's behind the curve unless you walk the freaking path. Yeah. So get out there, listen to that little voice and get out there and do it. And then once you get to the curve, you will see the next step. And, and the next step, you know, and yeah. otherwise you will be stuck always in one place. I mean, there are people who don't have legs and they are competing out there and some of them running faster than me because they got their prosthetic. They, they, their voice tells them that, hey, I want to run again, same as I ran when I had my legs or I want to compete and they get in these wheelchairs. And I mean, there are so many inspiring stories out there, but they had to get off the chair and do something. So yeah, listen to that voice and take action. Yeah. The next step, just the next step will always be revealed and your exactly. higher vision will come through. Um, and I have some really close friends that, you know, are in positions like that. They, their bodies are in those certain conditions. And the one thing I want to say about that is if for some reason, I, there was one man that I, I met who he actually wasn't able to feel his gut and his body because he was paralyzed in that area. So if you can't actually feel your body in that area, there is still a sense of knowing. However you connect with that knowing, you will feel it somewhere. You will just know. It's just the truth. So um, it doesn't always have to be your gut if you can't actually feel it there, right? In your physical body. There is still a knowing that you will feel. You will just know. So um, just trust that. Um, and I'm wondering, is there anything you know, else you'd like to share with the audience about how they can connect deeper when they're starting to feel their intuition, taking that next step and having the courage to take action? to actually follow through with, you know, like whether it's a flyer or whatever it is to move their business forward or calling you for coach call or whatever it is, like to actually take the action. Do you have any guidance around that? The biggest gift one can give themselves is to call it what you want. It, I will call it meditate. You can get centered. You can just stay quiet, but give yourself peaceful moments in, in, in every day, if possible. We are living in a world where music is playing in restaurants and in our car and we have headsets and there's always noise, always stuff coming at us. Take time to, to, to center yourself and just create space, create space. Because you cannot create a, a, an epiphany, you cannot create clarity if you have always all these jumbles, always, you know, text messaging and social media and all that. Mm -hmm. so take time out of your day and just allow space, allow silence in your life. Mm -hmm. And that's when the biggest epiphanies and thoughts and, and your intuition will kick in and will tell you what you should do or what you are meant to do. Mm -hmm. And then... Yeah, of course you will not know how to do it. So ask. Yeah. You know, ask. In, in this world, it's so beautiful. If I want to do anything, I can go on LinkedIn and I can type up, hey guys, I'm trying to do this. Does anybody know how to? Yeah. Or I look for a group that is specifically focuses on that one thing. And I will go in there and I say, hey guys, you know, and I, I will ask. So just ask and, and each next step will reveal itself. But anything is possible. I mean, yeah, if you... If you are tone deaf, maybe don't try to become the next Mariah Carey or whoever is famous these days. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Follow your gifts. Yeah, but, follow what's but, yeah. natural and good for you that feels good. Exactly. So, but yeah, it, it, it's yeah, allow space, allow silence in your life regularly, and and you will be amazed. I mean, even if you just go for a walk, but without the headset. Mm -hmm. Or hiking like when I hike that's when the best thoughts come for me and that's when I pull out my phone and I record my thoughts but yeah so that's that's my advice you know have silent moments every day and I try to have it like three four times a day like every hour I take a break and I do either yoga or I get on the treadmill a little bit and I don't listen to anything it's just silence and those are the moments that sometimes I get great thoughts 
or when I go hiking, I live in the mountains, so I hike a lot, I mountain bike a lot, but that's when I get the, 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 those epiphanies, those, oh, wow, yeah, I can do that. Mm -hmm. And they will, I mean, transform my, my days, my life, my business, my income grows and uh, my relationships improve, my health improves because I listen to my intuition. Mm -hmm. I have not been this health in about 15 years. That's awesome. So, I love it. Yeah. That's so cool. Well, is there any other advice or footprint I like to ask speakers that they'd like to leave, you know, with the audience, but so meaning if you were to take a walk, what would be the footprint that you would leave behind so people can remember or take, take um, that advice forward and just learn from you? Believe in yourself yeah. and be unstoppable. Thanks. You are on this planet, on this tiny little planet that doesn't even fit in my, in between these two fingers, even though I'm squeezing. I mean, in the big scheme of things, yeah. this planet is so tiny and you are on that planet yeah. for a fraction of a second mm. in, 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 the, in the timeline of, of you know, time, right? Yeah. And this gift, you have this gift, you know, don't be on your deathbed and thinking, man, I was so young, I could have done that, I could have done this. <laughs> no. Yeah. Do it now, do it now. So when you on, on 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 your swinging chair behind your house watching the sunset, you do it with a smile and you think, Oh my lord, it was an amazing ride. Yeah. Yeah. Be unstoppable. Believe in yourself and just do it. And fail, you know, fail, fail, fail. But it's just a word. Actually, I do not believe in failure. Yeah. You try, you try, and if it doesn't work, you learn something. So it's a learning experience. And then you try again, and then you ask, and then you, until, until you, same like when you learn to walk. Mm -hmm. You didn't fall and you thought, oh my gosh, I failed. I will never walk again. No, you tried and tried. So same now, anything, anything, you know, starting a business, uh, doing webinars, uh, writing a book, whatever. Yeah. Try, keep working at it and, and ask for input and and do it until you make it great. But yeah, this is your one chance. This is your one chance, you know. It's beautiful. Embrace it and live it fully. I love it. That's so beautiful. Well, is there a way that people can contact you? Do you have an email or a website? I know you do a lot of just online coaching now where they can maybe learn more about your coaching. Anything you want to share, please feel free. Actually, I just started a new type of coaching. <laughs> I do now messenger coaching also oh. at a very low fee. Thanks so ask you. me about it. What's and, your messenger uh, coaching? <laughs> yeah. And uh, I have, I don't know, at least 10 websites, but uh, the, the best one to find out about what I'm doing recently is clients enrollment funnels, clients enrollment funnels.com. And the best way to reach me is LinkedIn. Okay. DG Sebastian or now it says E.G. Irving Sebastian. Uh, so, but yeah, you can contact me on LinkedIn and connect with me, uh, join my group, uh, join the discussions and uh, check out my book on Amazon, Communication Skills Magic. If you buy it, make sure to put some reviews because for years I forgot to ask people to add reviews and now I realize how important that is. But uh, yeah, it's LinkedIn beautiful. is the best place to reach me. Yeah. Very cool. Well, thank you so much for being here today. It's always a pleasure to connect with you. And thank you everyone for being part of the show, for just following your intuition to be here, for trusting your gifts, and hopefully taking whatever that next action step is for you to really live your best life and just really be all of who you are. So we'll see you on the next episode. Bye.